Good day and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So before I go on, I'd like to ask you all to please leave a like, subscribe or comment on my video. If you don't like the video, please leave a dislike and leave a comment saying where I've gone wrong. Okay, um, in case anybody is wondering, the reason why my videos don't seem cut is I actually have a little bit of uh, a point note system that I use for making my videos at the moment. And I have like five or six points and I'm trying, to just, I'm trying to just discuss them. And if I feel like I drift too much off topic or if my speech becomes too dragged or too long, I just delete the video instead of trying to cut out and rematch things and try to repatch a video together because it's a bit long in process to edit. And this way it only wastes about half an hour worth of time in changing videos and redoing the speech. Okay, so let's go on to this video's topic. This video is going to be placing your ships into slots in a fleet. Now, there is one special fleet that I'm going to just say uh, right now. There's a fleet that you can make with pure Vexers. I've only realized this now after I reviewed all my information on the Vexer. If you want to run a very special fleet with Vexers, you can actually do it. You can make your full defensive Vexers, your... Um, your second uh, line of debuff, you can run it all on Vexes. Then your third line, you can run your support with Vexes as well if you want. And going up one more to your mid slot, you can run full offensive Vexes, um, the attack Vexes, and then you can run a glass cannon Vexer at the back. But the difference is you don't really need to run the glass cannon Vexer. You don't want your Vexer to be glass cannon. And even though they all seem like they more or less glass cannon, they're being built that way because that's the best way to use them. And so basically it's all that's the, the best fittings are going to be your attack and your glass cannon. They can both run with the best fittings. You'll still get the exact same results. Instead of using all three um, uh, drone buffs for the ship, they can run all three... They can run the exact same format that I said. So they can run a shield regen and the speed for their attack vessels in the last two slots on the fleet. Now, for your support vessel, they're obviously going to be running support weapons over offensive weapons. And they're going to be helping that front line. They're going to be very important in this type of a fleet. And that's the speciality about that Vexa fleet. Each one of them is going to run a different type of drone. So the first slot in the defensive line, they're going to just run EM stripping drones. So they're just going to run drones which are running EM weapons, so is your debuff uh, comms. So all you're doing in those first two slots is debuffing everything in front of you and stripping away the shields. So when four of them surround one ship, basically, that's an elite shield gone almost instantly because they don't have that resistance to EM damage. Then they're all running... Um, Cannons, they're going to run close range cannons instead of uh, high range cannons. They want that extra DPS in the front, so they're going to run that. They're going to run um, the NOS energy drain. They're going to run stasis webifiers. Both the defense and mudstock can do it, but I'd suggest two energy drains and, uh, and uh, webifier. Because the webifier can always be used to stop a ship that's running. Like those elites which are really fast. Hit them with the web of fire, get close on them, blast them out. So that's how you're going to run it for that front two. Your second one is running two debuff weapons and running um, uh, a thermal or a kinetic uh, damage uh, drone. So their drones are going to swarm around and do the next set of damage to give you that extra kick to get through the ships. They're running... Um, more or less closer to a single um, a single defensive uh, footing and a single um, offense footing for their rigs. They're not running double defensive or double drone rigs. Obviously, that means they're not getting that extra range. They're taking more damage. So that's what they're doing in that place in the support rig. And they are providing others with shields. They're providing others with armor or capacitor. So 
they're going to use those slots in the range for your low slots instead of running double uh, drone rigs like the best bird. So instead of running um, the directional and I'm, I'm forgetting what the drone uh, low slots were, but instead of running the drone low slots, they're going to run uh, uh, armor regen, uh, not armor regen, sorry, a shield regen, a capacitor, a thruster, and one drone command or drone range extending um, device. I don't remember what it is, even though I did the video earlier today. So that's going to make it a solid hit from that mid range, but it's also not going to have that extra bit of power and speed to it. So a little bit of a slower hit and you're not getting that massive range where you can get out of the fight completely, but you are recovering shield, you're helping those in front. Then your next slot is going to be your higher range. And when you're in the mid slot in support, you can run the group armor, the group capacitor, those three mid slots instead of running anything like a Norse energy drain or um, a cattle drop or a web of fire because you don't intend to get that close. Falling back is your attack drones. They are going to run a massive hitting explosive damage or um, a mid-range type of assault. It's purely up to them. They can choose whether they want to chew through the armor of the vessel and do minimal damage to the, to the shields. And that's purely up to them. I would suggest going with a mid-range setup on a nice thermal base. So running the hammerheads in that uh, for your drones, it's going to whack them. It's still going to do some damage. It's not going to be very effective, but you're still going to see damage numbers popping up with every hit that you uh, land. And once the shield is down, you're just going to fly into the next section. You're going to do a considerable amount of damage. Again, not massive damage, but you're going to eat away at that ship's um, armor, the ship shield, and then you're going to go through the hull like everybody else. And once everything is out and the ship is destroyed, you're serving your purpose as that assault ship. Obviously, if you're running something explosive, you're going to eat through the armor like mad. And you can't really use a full setup. Plus, you're going to be running a longer range assault gear to hit from that range. Now, moving on with it, the Vexa fleet isn't the best fleet ever, and let's talk about the others. Now, there are three other ships that I talked about. There is another ship in that same class, but I'm not discussing it because it's not really better than the Omen. It's not better than the Caracal. It's just thrown in there. It's similar to them. It's the same makeup as them. It's, it's not the best of the best. So, so trying to complete with a different type of fleet setup. So the fleet in the front, your best for armor is your omens and your caracal. Then falling a little bit back, for support you can actually use a, a, a support vessel. It's uh, not the Celestus, the Executor, Executor, the Executor ship. One of the best cruisers to run um, for your support. It's going to give you perfect support. It's higher power than your uh, destroyers and frigates. And you're going to enjoy yourself riding around with it because it can still fight. Because obviously you have that extra weapon slots on it and you can still keep a weapon on it even though... Oh no, nobody's bought any. Nobody's researched them. Oof. Okay, so the execute... Exec... Or uh, whatever it's called, I'm not sure. Not pronounce it properly. Uh, it's a T7 ship. That's how come it's not around. Well, they're going to come out in the next few days as everybody is about to bust through the cap again. Now, considering that, that's going to be your support vessels. So your front two are going to be Caracals and Omens. And now going to your back. Obviously, I haven't mentioned one. That's going to be your Stabbers and your Caracals again. The Caracals have one of the best setups to do damage because of missiles. They can actually run in all four of the major slots. In the mid slot, since we haven't yet, since I haven't reached T7, and I'm thinking that some of you might also run with the group 
of guys who haven't reached T7 yet. You can run um, a Vexer in that uh, in that slot. It can still do damage. It can provide support to the front. You could run a Caracal. Actually, my Caracal has the best energy gain from any of my ships. And uh, you could use just about any ship that's going to hold that slot properly. And what it means for you is you get to hold that slot in the center of support with something that could do a little bit of damage or could help you take out a shield or could help you break through armor. And that's where your fleet gains when you play a good formation and when you play with the right ships and playing the right weapons. Now, as I said, each fleet uh, of vessel type has a slight different weakness. The armor and the weapons, if I'm correct, are almost exactly the same. Let me just open this one more time. So your armor, when it comes to it, explosive damage seems to be the best against them most of the time. So running with something with explosive damage is only good against armor. Running with something with EM damage is only good against uh, shields. Let me just do this here quickly. So I'm open this and go down the list. Oh, this is showing me the shield. Yeah, the shield is standard. Almost everybody has the same shield. Yes, yeah, so the armor is slightly different on each one. Looking at this one, you're 50% on uh, EM resistance, almost 50% on thermal resistance. Okay, then go down to st Stabber. So have to go into them each one and double check and confirm it once more the figures are way different you this time yeah you could run um, a thermal damage against it you're gonna tear right through the ship now where's the omen the omen's armor shows right here once more you can use thermal against it it's still gonna do fair damage so as you can see the ships are very similar in their makeup it's just that small advantage, disadvantage. And this one here has... Um, this one here, Thermal will do better than Kinetic because of the difference in armor. But all of them are weak to uh, explosive damage on the armor. Thorax Prototype. This is also in the same class as the other vessels, but I don't really like it all that much. I don't know whether it's just the shape or the fact that it's just a second vessel from the same fleet and it's a rail gun running ship that's a kinetic damage basically uh, it's gonna run the same uh, fittings as uh, any other ship basically just the best rail cannons and you're going to make it in the exact same way as you'd make a caracal and here's another reason why i don't like it very low capacity very low power low uh, target lock it's a crap ship overall that's what I can say about it. It's not worth it for that fleet issue level. It may be cheaper, but it's not worth it. Oh, no, wait. This is the fleet issue. Hmm. Did I notice that? It's still not worth it. Even with the extra armor, it only has low slot advantages. And it doesn't have much excess power. So it's going to be weak. It's going to get uh, thrashed in a fight. And nah, it's not gonna help. Now nah, it's it's got very low uh, regen on power. If I'm correct, even the Caracal has better. Let me just double check that. Uh, I I did know that it was a possibility as a fleet class vessel. So I thought the prototype was better. Oh no! Th so my personal ship has better gain because of what I've fitted on it. So I did make that mistake. So Caracal will be no good in support. It's good for the fighting. So overall, as I've shown you and discussed everything, those are the basics. And when it comes to fittings in your engineering rig, you either boost power or you boost speed. Because the other boosts don't really help you so much in engineering, like power and speed. So th those are the basics on how you're going to run your fleets. And as you know, I've already discussed the formation and uh, jumping pattern, the usage of your fleet, but these are the best fits 
of ships to your fleet. The front is Caracal and Stabo. Your mid-range would be something like your Vexa or your um, Omen. And your Assault is going to be Omen. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. I think I'm mixing up ships again. If I'm correct, it's... Um, The Omen has better armor, it's going to fall back, can't take much to the front. So Omen is for Assault, Caracal is for Assault, Caracal is for Defense, and Stabber is, uh, is for Defense, and your Vexa is for the mid-slot in between for Support. You could also run something like your, um, your Stabber in the Support uh, issue, but then it's not going to do any damage. It's not playing any secondary role in the fighting. It's not meant for the support class in that way. So yeah, so, so that's your basics on where to slot your ships and your fleets. So that's going to be it on this video. Thank you for watching.